So good morning all. Uh, we'll be starting our today's session. We would be discussing 20 questions for ICT. Now when talking about these 20 questions, I would let you know that you would have some contemporary questions and some theoretical questions. We have not included any questions from binary numbers, conversion to decimal octal, but that's really, really important. In June and last session, there was a question on fractional questions and decimal. So fractional and decimal conversions are again important. Conversion from hexadecimal and octal systems to binary and uh, binary to decimal. So those were the questions for your AP set. So again, these are some of the important topics that have not been covered here, but are really, really important. So just go through those videos and cover those topics properly. Again, the expected questions for your July become important for your December exam as well. So don't just do the expected questions that we have for this time, but also cover the expected questions that were there for the July exam. Also, the handouts, there are a lot of questions for the handouts. So handouts would be available shortly on exam race. Uh, the CBSC net section updates. Even if the videos are not live yet, the handouts would be available within this week. So just check out for all the handouts for now. So let's begin with our questions today. So as always, we have two questions with the surprise gifts and the first answers would receive the surprise uh, gifts for those. So first question, what is quantum computing? Quantum computing, qubits are some of the important topics. Internet of things, IoT, then you have cloud computing become very, very important. Great. So I already have the answers here. A lot of you with the correct answers. Great going. So it's basically the nature and the behavior of energy and the matter on the quantum level. So it's not only the energy, but at the uh, both the energy and the matter. And that's the basic confusion that has come up in choice A and B. So that becomes important for you. The next question is very important question, uh, which amongst the following nations are not likely to launch 5G by 2019-2020? Question number two, looking for correct answers. Uh, no. So two answers are already no. So now you have lesser choice left. So I believe you would have more answers that would be available there. Uh, no, no, no. So you would have uh, the five countries, the four nations which are set to launch it. So yes, you have the right answer now. So India. So India is the answer. India is not amongst the nations that would be launching it in 2019. So we have South Korea, Japan, China and USA which are considered as the leader and would be the first to launch the 5G. So a very important question. The next question which is considered as the world's smallest computer. Uh, we have already discussed it in expected questions for your July examination. So becomes very, very important. What is the correct answer for question number three? Uh, B, great. So Ishita has the right answer. Gurveen has the right answer. It's M3 that is Michigan Micromoto which is considered as the world's smallest uh, computer and you have one uh, cubic mm as the size of the computing device. Very very important question for your upcoming examination. The next question, this is a question for your uh, uh, kind of surprise question. So looking for the first correct answer for question number four. What is Dejivrat? Question number uh, four, looking for the first correct answers. What is Dejivrat? Uh, Pooja has the first correct answer. Great going, congrats Pooja. So you have Dejivrat, which is vehicle to accelerate access and reach to transformational action. And this is an idea for making digital payment for the first time users, simplifying the idea of digital payment, uh, bringing in a kind of financial and social inclusion, which is the main aim of the government these days. So that's the correct answer here. So A is the right answer. Question number five. Very, very important. Uh, so government has declared nine pillars for digital India. Which among the following is not the nine pillars of digital India? So question number five, looking for the correct answer. Uh, question number five, 
Preeti has the right answer. So it's digital payments. You have nine pillars which are broadband highways, access to mobile, mobile connectivity, information for all, e-governance, e-kranti, you have information highways, then you have electronic manufacturing, IT jobs, early harvest program. So those are some of the nine pillars of the digital India. Very, very important question. Uh, which of the following? Usually the question comes like this. is not. So it could be either ways. An important topic from your current affairs section a very important question again and again a question for your surprise uh, section so looking for the first correct answer for question number six question number six looking for the first correct answers what is India stack Preeti has the first correct answer. It is an API to solve problems of paperless and cashless service delivery in India. So it has four distinct technologies that has been used. That is presenceless layer, uh, paperless, uh, paperless layer, cashless layer and consent layer. So those are the four pillars on which you have India Stack API. And API is basically an application program interface that has been put up to solve the issues of paperless and cashless delivery in India uh, under the digital infrastructure model. So a very important question again. And this was intentionally given because students were getting confused with, uh, as I believe there was a lot of confusion with the stock market. It has nothing to do with the stock market. And that was willing put as one of the choices the next question is what are the risks being faced by the virtual currencies in India and abroad as well so uh, what are the issues faced by virtual currencies this is in light with the Bitcoin uh, legalization of a Bitcoin is a controversial and a debatable topic these days so Bitcoin cryptocurrencies become very very important uh, we have a separate lecture on these topics so just refer those lectures as well so Pragati has the right answer and a lot of you now. So all of those are the risks that are being faced by virtual currencies. Uh, since they are called as electronic wa uh, wallets, loss of password credentials become a major threat. Then uh, the payments that are from peer to peer basis can take place without an authorization of the central agency. Uh, that's again a risky proposition and they can be traded uh, on exchange platforms uh, whose legal uh, levels or legal jurisdiction levels are not yet clear. So those are some of the major risks that we talk about under virtual currencies. The next is what are PPIs? A very important question. Usually you have for your net examination questions based on uh, the acronyms. So acronyms become important not only for your ICT and computers but also for your uh, later section that's the uh, higher education. Okay, looking for the answers for question number eight. So yes, now we have the right answers, Ankita and more. So it's a prepaid payment instrument. These could be in four types closed, semi-closed and open. So closed are uh, ones which are uh, available only for the specific location. For example, a gift card of McDonald's working only at a McDonald's location. Others are uh, open which could have a cash withdrawal facility as well. A uh, prepaid instrument from let's say a Visa or a MasterCard would be a kind of uh, open card that could be seen. So you have various aspects under which you have the prepaid payment instruments that are there. And these are prepaid, preloaded. And therefore, uh, this was an important question that was put up and confusing terminologies as the choices. The next is a simple question. A lot of you would come up with the answers uh, right up. So who is considered as the father of computers? Question number nine, father of computer. So right, you have Charles Babbage as the father of computer, but father of modern computing systems is Alan Turing. So that was the confusion that most of you have. And therefore, we had willingly put up this question to remove kind of uh, controversies there. And then for the basic architecture, you have Newman as the leader. So as a leading person. The next is, what is the purpose of EEP ROM? So EEP ROM is important and if you know the full form, you would automatically be able to come up with the right answer. So a lot of you ready with the conventional kind of questions, uh, great number of answers coming up for father of computings. Okay, 
So question number 10, right, a lot of you coming up with right answers. So C is the correct answer. It is a ROM that can be written or changed with the help of electric uh, electrical devices. And that's the basically the acronym for EEP ROM that is electrically erasable uh, programmable read only memory. So electrically erasable, that's the key thing here. So that's the answer and lot of you have the right answer here. Great going. The next is which of the following is the component of third generation computing? Again, a question based on simple learning. So first generation, uh, looking for answers for third generation computings and then we'll have a quick revision of the uh, fifth generation till fifth generation. So you have uh, B as a right answer and lot of you coming up with B. So first generation is vacuum, uh, vacuum tube, second generation is transistors, third generation is what is here that's integrated circuits and then you have microprocessors as the fourth generation. So that's how you have the uh, evolution in the computing that was there a kind of simple question but yes you do have questions like these. A very important question what is half duplex channel so this is something related to transmission channel so you have simple duplex half duplex and full duplex full duplex means it could work in both the directions simultaneously simple duplex means it can run only in one direction and now what is half duplex is there so looking for answers uh, great a lot of you coming up with right answer so uh, half duplex can send and receive data but not at the same time so that's the correct answer answer a choice a is the right answer here the next is the question what is used to regenerate or replicate signals that are weakened or distorted by transmission over longer distances to regenerate or replicate and that's the key thing that you need to understand for question number 13 uh, yes, so Nivedita, Sapna and Lot have a right answer. So those are known as repeaters. So since from the name it's clear you are trying to regenerate, replicate, you have repeaters that are there. Then you have bridge which basically connects two LAN, uh, router which is uh, usually uh, aim to join the network together it could be a wired or a wireless router that could be there and then you have gateways which are basically the stopping point for the data on the way that's going so that's the gateway from one network to another or two or from from one network so that's the basic difference between the four terms now what is the startup of a computer from a powered down or off state known as again a very very important question and a confusing question here because if I had other choice, the answer would have been very, very clear. So looking for the correct answer for question number, great. So Preeti has the right answer, it's hard boot. So hard boot is the same as cold boot. So another name for cold boot or uh, is hard boot and therefore you have hard boot as the right answer here. Warm boot is basically from the restart via the operating system is the warm boot. So question on cold boot and here we had not willingly, willingly put cold boot but rather hard boot as the option. So uh, the next question is what is spear pushing? Now we have various types of pushing that are important. Spear pushing is one of those very very important for your coming exams. One is the spear pushing then you have veiling which we'll discuss in a while. So looking for the answers as of now. Question number, great, C, Tarun has the right answer. So basically it is phishing for randomly, uh, uh, for random victims by using uh, fraudulent emails as bait. So that's the key idea under spear, uh, spear phishing. Then you have veiling where you are sending the information. A lot of you coming up with right answers, great. So great preparations with the students ahead. Uh, veiling is a concept where you have the top hierarchy that is being targeted, the CEOs and the top level data is stolen. You have clone phishing, uh, phishing where you have a replica of the existing uh, information that is uh, created and uh, the person becomes a victim considering that to be a real information and then you have snow uh, shoeing that's a hit and run scam that is commonly seen uh, where you have a push out message that is sent through uh, various uh, domains and IP addresses. So those are some of the major types of phishing and spear phishing is one of those very very important. Okay. The next question is what is GIGO? Question number 16, what is GIGO? Looking for the right answers for question number 16. 
Great, Nivedita, uh, Nivedita and lot of you, right answer. So garbage in and garbage out is the right answer and it pertains to the computer errors uh, which are not actual errors but uh, they are kind of data errors that could be seen due to uh, incorrect input that is given to the system. So because of the incorrect input, the error that comes up is called as GIGO. So garbage in and garbage out. What is kiosk? So commonly heard and a very common question I would say that's up here. What is kiosk? So looking for the right answers for question number 17. Asma uh, has the right answer here. So it's a computer station that, provi uh, that provides the public with specific and useful information services. So it's basically a kind of help, help desk to help the uh, common people with the various uh, information and the various activities they want to. A very important question of recent, if you have been with the news, this answer is very, very obvious. Question number 18, looking for right answers. Question number 18, looking for the right answers. And then we have another question related to this. So, oh great. So a lot of you coming up with right answers. So it's a social humanoid robot. Uh, this was developed by a Hong Kong company, which was known as Hanson Robotics. And uh, you have the replica of Murphy, which has been designed as Sophia. Uh, it has been part of the United Nations Innovation Championship uh, and has won the title there for the first ever innovation championship. Uh, there so again important we would be having a similar question so I won't discuss a lot here the next question is a compiler translates a program written in a high level language into a so again a very direct question those from computer science uh, the answer would be very very obvious from a higher level uh, language into a Great, so into a lower level language or a machine language or what we say as a uh, assembly language or an object code, either of those would be the right answer. So here it's machine language as the correct answer. So that's what is the role of the compiler. Uh, the last question again related to uh, the same Sophia. So which country has granted citizenship to a robot recently? A very important question. Looking for the last uh, last question, the correct answer. Great, Bini Thomas has the right answer. It's Saudi Arabia. It's not Hong Kong. Hong Kong, this robot has been developed by a Hong Kong based company and that is Hanson uh, Robotics. And in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, the nation or the country has granted Sophia the robot that has been developed by Hong Kong based company Hanson Robotics as the first citizen uh, or has provided citizenship to a robot and that's really really important okay so with this we cover our 20 questions for today uh, we would be having one more live session where we would be bringing questions related to reasoning uh, analytical and some of the di questions probably so just wait for the next session uh, on tuesday 10 30 uh, that would be our final session before your net examination we'll be coming up with numerous series of expected questions uh, three more for your environment and then political science and computing so just stay tuned uh, silages uh, shalini we have already covered those in the lecture session so you can just uh, take down those uh, or check down those videos uh, have a great day ahead good luck